us, I'm sure. I have missed you guys so much. Who are you picking? Uh, <laughs> one of you two. <laughs> Jeez, lots win. of upside. <laughs> yeah. Poor choice. Uh, can we start off with DeAndre? I mean, that was kind of big news today that he's uh, yeah. on the Olympic team. Oh, uh, Has it been announced? Not formally, but. Yeah, so. Let's wait till he's announced. But it, let me put it in this way: it would be terrific for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really would be. I think. I think um, you know some guys. You know the Olympics are great. Some guys are really good for. Mm-hmm. I think it would be really good for uh, DJ. So uh, if the everything that they're saying is true, I think it would be wonderful for him. Do they allow? Do they allow hacking in the international rules? Uh, they don't. Oh. You know, it's more like the college game you know so you guys had some <laughs> coaching changes too mm-hmm. um, what kind of led to those and, and you, you've talked a lot about not wanting to be stale can yeah. bringing in new voices cause that yeah I, I've, I've always that? yeah I've always thought that, that that's important um, you know um, you know in, in Kevin's case you know he, he just got old <laughs> 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 yeah but he was he was terrific Kevin was great and uh, so was they, both of them were, and, uh, you know, we just felt like it was time to, to make changes, you know, and that would, you know, in Kevin's case, really, he, we talked about it the year past, that this would probably be his last year. He's been with me for a long, I don't know how many years, I can't even count the years, but um, he's a trusted so, and so was Dave, so. When you look forward to, like, o'clock with the graduates and you guys are... You mean 5.30 when it's our turn? Yeah. Right. Well, you you got to stay at 25. Maybe. Yeah. What can you get at that point? Do you yeah, know, we're realistic. You know, I don't think most people are when they, you know, outside of the teams. You know, you know you're at the 25th pick. That's a... Um, there's an honor to be at that pick in some ways. You know, that means you you had a pretty good regular season. Um, the only time you don't feel good about it is when you go into the draft. You wish you were in the top 10, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like this draft. Um, I think it's, um, you know, obviously one and two have a chance to be superstars. Um, but I think there's good players. I think it's deep, even into the second round this year. You know, that doesn't – we don't know of any of my rotational players yet. Uh, we hope that some of them will be someday. Uh, it would be nice to get one in the draft that could be now. Uh, but that's going to be hard to do. When you go into a draft like this, are you one that looks for the best player available or for someone that fits a need? Well, the first thing I do is rely on the guys that I've seen them a hundred times. And I've said that when I was in Boston and in Orlando, I think the mistake coaches make is they don't get a chance to see the guys all year. They start watching once the uh, season is over and you, you play catch up and you, you, you tend to fall in love with that one guy. But you haven't seen him as much. You haven't seen him live either as much, you know. The three on three workouts aren't live. It's not five on five, you know. So you have to be careful there. And so you really need to trust the people uh, that you've hired. Uh, that's number one. And then number two, you have to trust your eyes. Uh, but um, at 25, you tend to go with the best player you think is available. Uh, but if there's someone in the positional need and it's close and you don't think it's that big of a difference, you go with the positional need. You guys are kind of capped out after this, um, does that affect the strategy? I mean, you mentioned trying to find someone who's now. Is that kind of because of the salary cap situation? No, I mean, you can't. Like, if you can find someone who can help you now, everybody's going to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but, you know, let's be honest. At 25, that doesn't happen a lot, sure. you know? So we understand that. What we're saying is we're going to pick the best player available, and if that guy can help us now, it would be great. Uh, but that's not anything we're counting. We're not going on this draft thinking when we come out of this, uh, it's guaranteed this guy's going to help us next year. It may be a guy we like uh, and we project out two or three years and we're willing to take him at 25. So um, it's that's what we're going to do. You, you guys have two picks. You bought a pick last year. Is mm-hmm. that something you could look at? Or do you like enough guys? No, we don't want three picks. picks. You know, uh, There is a scenario, actually, that we would do that. But most of the time, you know, we're, we're a team that's we're trying to win a title. And to have three picks, uh, three three rookies plus CJ, and it, you now you have a lot of young guys at the end of your bench, and um, I don't know if you want that either. Have you, have you got any more clarity on Paul Pierce's? Not decision? yet. No. Have you uh, talked about him about maybe like setting a timeline just for planning purposes for you guys? Or? Yeah, we have, we have, and you know we know the time, and we're good with it. Have you fielded any? Uh, 
phone calls for trades as far as any of the players on the roster right now? You mean those four or five players that we have <laughs> on the roster? Because we don't have a lot of guys on our yeah. roster. So not really. Uh, you know, we've, we have filtered a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, it's like I've always said, and I don't. I think people get it. Is when you have, you know, the big three like we have, you don't get a lot of calls about those guys. It's, it's just like Golden State. I'm assuming are not getting a lot of calls about Clay, Draymond, and and Seth. But we're we're, we're the same way. Uh, you just don't get a lot of calls uh, of those sorts. You mentioned one and two in this draft being pretty set. We think um, after that, it seems like. There's a lot of it's a yeah, it's interesting. Plus, could yeah. that lead to more trade talk, especially when there are well, the reason there's more trade talk is simple. Uh, there's like with the 30 teams in the NBA, how many are in the first round? It's you know, half the six or seven teams with no picks. That's why it's the trade talk. You know, there's a bunch of teams with multiple picks. Um, it's not because it, it, all the players are even, it's more because there's a lot of teams that aren't involved, and so you're going to hear more trade talk because of that. Is, it, is that an option for you guys to, to move out of the first round? Is that Yeah, that everything's an option, you know, for sure, yeah. But last time we had talked to you, you talked about, you know, wanting to keep the team as intact as possible. Yeah. In your, like, exit interviews and, and conversations with guys, you know, as they headed off in the summer, have you got any sense of whether that's re more realistic or, or less? Well, it's probably more realistic in the fact that, to a man, they all want to come back. Uh, but then there's business. You know, and so uh, we'll see once July 1st comes. You know, it's going to be interesting with the way the cap's going up. And, um, you know, we have three bird guys that we have a chance of signing. Mm -hmm. uh, but they all may be, not all of them, but they may outprice. And we can't all sign all three, but we're going to try. With Austin, is that process easier or harder? Oh, I don't think it's any different, mm -hmm. uh, really. I mean, it is what it is. It's mm -hmm. uh, It's – straight business and um, you know for on both ways so I don't think that adds any intrigue or not you know uh, I guess the only place that I wish I had an advantage I wish the his agent would would call me and act like I'm not working for the Clippers and just talk to me that way that would be terrific <laughs> then that would be an advantage can't do that. but I don't think he's gonna do that no but if he does that would be good. Have, have, have you kind of wrapped your head around what the math is going to look like this summer? Is mm -hmm. it like what a $15 million deal? Like, do you have no, like a we, scale we, kind you, of you thing? You still have your scale like everybody. You have analytical departments. You have your, your basketball people. And every year, it doesn't matter if the cap goes up or not. You still put a value on your players, and you try to put it towards whatever the numbers are going to be. So we have a price, you know, that we think each guy could get. And that should get, but could get. And, yeah. um, and we try to, you know, work around those numbers. And, you know, I would say over the last two years, we've been pretty almost exact to the numbers that guys have ended up getting. So it's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. This year will be a little tougher because it's a big increase. And what you don't know if, if guys are going to pay big for uh, and, and then not or if they're going to yeah. pay big for average. We don't know. That's we'll what I was going to ask. What, what's the minimum market going to look like this summer? We, it's it's what you don't know. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's an unknown. I think that will go late. <clears throat> I think the top guys will go quickly. You know, as far as their offer. You know, that's just my belief. I think the guys under the top guys will take a long time, and then I think that the next guys. You know, when I'm saying the next guys between the six and ten, I think they're going to go quick. Uh, I think it's the guys in between that will take a while because the league is going to have to figure out how much do you pay that type of player. How's um, Blake's squad and Chris's hand? Uh, they're good. Blake was in here today um, feeling good, wants to get to working out soon, he told me. Uh, and Chris has been healthy with a hand for a while. So Blake's not, like, um, uh, doing any basketball stuff yet? No, he's. Uh, I think he's shooting free throws. I don't know if you count that as basketball stuff. but. Uh, you know, but I don't think he would at this point in the summer anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least I wouldn't be. Maybe that's why I turned out the way I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you.